Hey everybody, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake, and in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about logo design. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to actually design a logo. While you want a logo to be unique and have its own distinct image, you don't really wanna emphasize an abundance of creativity here. Logos are best when they're kept simple and when you take a minimalist approach to them. The most iconic logos of our time are a primary example of this. When designing a logo, it's usually best to start by actually sketching it out, either in a sketchbook or as I prefer to use a grid composition book. Using a grid composition book is gonna give you a distinct advantage because it has grid lines and graphs that you can use to make the process a lot simpler. And then when you go into a vector program like Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw, or Inkscape, it's gonna make things a lot easier for you to work and to replicate the images that you put together using either uh, the pen tool or using the various shape tools and then combining them using Pathfinder and other various methods that I'll cover in an Illustrator tutorial that I'll do to accompany this video at a later date. Uh, the annotation will be around here somewhere whenever I complete that video. The reason you wanna use a vector illustration program instead of something like Photoshop, which is a raster-based program, is because you want the logo to be scalable. You want it to be able to uh, retain the same amount of quality when it's on any of your branded material, like a business card or a billboard or any of your other print material, as well as the web. Also in working with print, you are gonna want to produce everything in CMYK instead of RGB. So that's gonna be very important too, and Illustrator is gonna make that really simple for you. There are three main types of logos. Logo type, which us designers refer to sometimes as word marks, are just what they sound like. They're logos that are designed based on the word and on the fonts. And you can manipulate those fonts to make them unique and to stand out. So it's a stylized type treatment, if you will. Then you have icons or symbols. These are graphical images like the Twitter bird or the Pepsi symbol that ultimately represent a brand. Kind of like the Nike swoosh or like the Q in QuickTime. Then you have what are referred to as combination marks. These are logos that utilize both a graphical symbol as well as a typographic treatment. When designing logos, you wanna make sure that they look good in black and white as well as color. This is one of the advantages of sketching first. You get to work out your ideas and see if they're going to work appropriately at different sizes. You can try different things out. You can make sure that they work without color as a feature because ultimately you want the logos to be unique and recognizable under pretty much any circumstance. You don't want them to have to require the color for that. Remember, these logos ideally are gonna be used in a lot of different situations. They could be used in motion graphics. They could be used on print for business cards. They could be scaled up large and be on posters. So you wanna make sure you're keeping that in mind from the beginning to the end when you're working through them in the design process. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A later video that I'm going to do at some point is gonna actually take you from sketching out a logo in a sketchbook to designing it digital in Illustrator. I'll also be doing a lot of different Illustrator tutorials where I build up logos that have already been sketched out. So um, just kind of look forward to that and make sure you stay tuned to the channel and subscribe in order to get those videos from me. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget, new graphic design videos on Mondays. And as always, you guys, thanks for watching.